Top Biz. Hello everyone, myself Monisha and in this video, today we are going to take you through the concept of e-waste license for dismantling process in India. So what is the overview of e-waste license for dismantling? E-waste stands for electronic waste. E-waste is one of the growing streams throughout the world responsible for pollution through electronic gadgets. During the recycling and dismantling of the e-waste, some precious metals are extracted which contributed the significant economic benefit. Although some types of hazardous chemicals present in the materials, those considered to be life-threatening. The recycling of e-waste must have been done before the disposal of the e-waste. In India, e-waste falls under the Schedule 3 of the Hazardous Waste Management and Handling Rules 2003. As per the Schedule 3, e-waste is defined as the waste, electrical and electronic equipment including all components, sub-assemblies and their fractions except batteries falling under the rules. E-waste management in India the information technological industry of India was consistently growing during the 1990s. Therefore, the industry has contributed the e-waste in India for a long time. E-waste includes old and discarded computers, mobile phones, motherboards, old chargers, CDs, DVDs, headphones, televisions, air conditioners, etc. The recycling and dismantling of e-waste activities are not adequately followed in India. The workers who work in e-waste plants are primarily illiterate and unaware of the potential hazard of e-waste. India has been listed as a dumping ground of e-waste in developed countries since they sold loads of electrical and electronic e-waste in Indian markets. Who can register under an e-waste license? The manufacturer, producer, consumers, bulk consumers, collection centers, dealers, e-retailers, refurbishers and dismantlers can apply for the e-waste license and recyclers who are engaged in the manufacturing, sale, transfer, purchase, collection, storage and processing of electrical waste and electrical equipment mentioned under the schedule. E-waste dismantling, what do we understand with this? E-waste dismantling is the process of crushing, destroying, burning and melting electronic discarding materials. During the procedure, a minimal amount of plastic was recovered. The dismantling process pollutes the environment. The e-waste dismantling process reduces the burden on the environment, prevents toxicity and generates value. The dismantling process includes dismantling e electronic equipments like computers, laptops, LCDs and LEDs, screens, televisions, printers, appliances and more. Dismantling is considered an essential step which involves segregating the components into pieces that can be reused. Manual component dismantling separates the reusable from the reusable. The recyclable fractions that include valuable components are gathered. Hazardous and high value components such as PCBs are removed and the remaining components are sent to be separated mechanically. Appliances are dismantled to the point where manual separation is no longer practicable and then shipped to be processed. Mechanical shredding is required for further separation into pure materials. Space required for the dismantlers. Dismantlers require space for keeping electrical and electronic equipments for up to 180 days. Space for dismantling and volume reduction process. Space required for keeping dismantled and segregated materials and free space for the movement of his administration. For a dismantling capacity of 1 trillion per day, minimum of 300 square meters is expected to be needed for raw material storage, segregated material storage, dismantling activities and office and administration and other utilities. Now let's take a look on the dismantling process. A dismantling operation is essentially a manual operation for segregating the components and returning them to the respected users or recyclers. Elements that can be directly usable shall be 
is transferred to the authorized refurbisher. Though other parts can be sent to recyclers with a valid CTO or are identified as authorized e-waste recyclers depending on the nature of the part. For example, aluminium and steel parts that have no hazardous material could be transferred to the recyclers and those have hazardous elements shall be forwarded to authorized e-waste recyclers. So what are the functioning of the dismantlers? The functioning includes de-dusting, manual dismantling process, succeeding the manually opening of the electrical and electronic equipment into the component. The dismantling process shall include physical separation and segregation. The dismantler may use a screwdriver, wrenches, pliers, wire cutters, tongs and hammers. Disassembled components should be delivered to authorized e-waste recyclers or recyclers with valid permission to operate. Manual dismantling shall be done on a dismantling table with plenty of room. The de-dusting system to maintain the factory's desired work zone air quality act has been changed over time. Suction hoods shall be utilized in the de-dusting system on a dismantling table with a cyclone. Back filter, AC and chimney for venting a height of 3 meters above the root level. For putting the dismantled items together, collection boxes must be positioned near the disassembly table. Workers have to wear proper personal protective equipments during the dismantling, such as goggles, masks, gloves, helmets and gumboots are required. The following dismantled items and components should be removed from the end of life products and stored safely for the transportation to recyclers. Dismantlers must have suitable capabilities for dealing with the leaks of compressor oils, coolant, refrigerant gases like CFC, HFCF and mercury from end of the fluorescent and other mercury containing lamps among other things. Broken fluorescent lights and oil spills should be contained first to prevent the substance from spreading to adjacent places. Dry sand, unique wounds, absorbent pads, stabilizing chemicals and other method may be used for later transfer to hazardous waste TSDFs. The following conditions need to be met before dismantling process begins. Water resistant roofing and impervious surfaces, disassembled spare part storage area, separate storage containers for batteries, capacitors containing PCBs and PCTs. Why is e-waste recycling plant setup required? Now coming to the main area, the whole world is observing the draconian impact of e-waste pollution, which rapidly causes the degradation of the environment. The pollution due to the e-waste not only causes harm on land, but in water bodies also. Many aquatic animals die because of the consumption of e-waste and plastic waste. Therefore, recycling and dismantling and collecting e-waste plays a significant role that benefits the environment. License is required for setting up e-waste plant. So the licenses includes ISO certification, NOC from SPCV, company incorporation, GST registration. So now let's take a look on what are the documents required for e-waste author authorization. Aadhaar card of the authorized person, PAN copy of the authorized person, factory license or trade license, electricity bill of the unit location, layout plan, MOA if the applicant is a company, AOA if the applicant is the company, board resolution for appointing an authorized person. So with all these documents, you can get the required registration for going ahead with this process. That's all for this video. For any other concerns or questions on this process, kindly email us at info at the rate corpusadvisors.com or call on the numbers mentioned over the screen. Do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.